Let's do this. Let me see your face. Hey, welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today we're gonna to be making sense of life through quilts. I'll try to summarize this movie. It takes place in 1795, I believe, in France, just after the French Revolution, or one of them, during the time of the Marquis de Sade, who is one of the main characters. He happens to be at this point in a an asylum. So the Marquis de Sade is there because he writes pornographic books. Lude. And so he's an influential guy. His wife is influential, so she got him to be placed in an asylum versus going to prison. Yeah. Because of his position, his social standing, he yeah. has a bigger room, he yeah. has all of these amen amenities because yeah. the wife is basically just kind of giving the asylum more money to house him in that way. Yeah, we see the goings on in the asylum. One of the helpers who does the laundry, she helps the Marquis de Sade get his lascivious so writings out. The Marquis de Sade is secretly still writing, even though he's not allowed to, unbeknownst to the person who's in charge, which yeah. is the Abbe, through the chambermaid played by Kate Winslet. I don't remember the name. Yeah. What's her name? Madeline. Madeline, yeah. Through Madeline, he's able to get his books published secretly. And then Napoleon finds out and enlists the help of this other guy who also kind of is in charge of yeah. other asylums. And he's just, you know, go there and yeah. sort this out. He has some special skills, yeah. AKA torturing people. Restore discipline. To restore discipline. The movie continues as eventually they keep trying to make it harder and harder for the Marquis to, to write, write his books yeah. by taking away all his quills at first and then by taking away all his possessions mm -hmm. and taking away his clothing because at one point he started writing on his clothing, you know. He uses wine first wine, yeah. because he doesn't have anything then else to write blood, on. Then, then he uses feces. his own blood, then feces. Like he's yeah. fighting for his life. Yeah. Anything <laughs> yeah. you can think of yeah. to write. So that's basically it. The movie yeah. follows this guy who refuses to be repressed. He's finding every single way to... And to work out his what he calls like his vices or his perversions or like the, the inner demon and to kind of, that's how he gets it out instead of acting it out. That's, he puts it on words and that's his therapy. That's his way of yeah. coping. Gosh, I'm tired. Maybe we should have. <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of the, the main things with the movie are dealing with, for instance, humans in a, whatever kind of society they find themselves in. They're the things that are acceptable, sec acceptable behavior, acceptable virtues, acceptable norms and everything. And then there's the stuff that is buried or suppressed or illegal right or criminalized and a lot of these things are just also still as natural to the human condition as the things that are accepted i was mm -hmm. upset about madeline's passing i really like madeline she's a foot soldier the kind of foot soldier you want the one who's true to the cause and yeah. whose commitment to the cause is so powerful that fear isn't even a factor i think that's just something that is so rare for all of us whatever cause you're rallying behind mm -hmm. there's always this fear hovering and it'll either stop you in your tracks or every single step you're taking make you question things and that chips away at the strength of whatever it is whatever vision you have and whatever hope you have for future you know but with her she no matter what happened that did not dissuade her even when they brought Michael Caine in and there were all of these kind of guards who are looking over the asylum to make sure to find dissenting yeah. dissenters yeah. she that did, still did not that did not dissuade her from what she believed in. That's something that I know personally that I do really admire. It's very rare to find people who have faith in something mm -hmm. and are able to actually stand by it because standing by something you have faith in is very, very hard. I think she also respected the Marquis for having such dedication to something he believed was important. So that's the thing that made me really sad when she passed away because I was just kind of, I was like, wow, what an incredible woman to mm -hmm. have passed away, you know? Mm -hmm. She deserved so much more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of extremes, and it's hard to find that balance where uh, the Marquis has an extreme of freedom of speech and creative expression, right? To the point of his own health and others, where he just smears feces everywhere. That, at that point, you're just hurting everyone involved. Or exactly, even before then, when he's just, if he continued to write, the poem would shut down their, yeah. their asylum, and that would mess up everyone's situation. You'd say, well, you sh should you stop because someone is trying to stop you from doing something? Not necessarily, but he's not also really considering how his actions affect other people either. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of a selfish thing. Then, yeah, you have Michael Caine, who's law and order at all costs and doesn't understand the importance of creativity and community and connection because he's or a very... Or just plain he's kindness. Kindness. He's yeah. cold to everyone. With Abe, right? You know, like, there are people in the real world outside of movies mm -hmm. who will look at things like, well, you know, he's coming from a tough background. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, well, you know, he's insane. Yeah, yeah, he's always, sick. Always he's sick. He doesn't understand yeah. let's show him love yeah. he murdered my mom yes but yeah yeah 
He murdered your yes. mom, but remember. Yeah. Forgive like God would forgive. Forgive like God would, would forgive yeah. this man yeah. who was tortured as a child. Yeah. That's and where his extreme is too far. Yeah. Where, that's where his extreme is too far because you are. Yeah. You, I think it is true. Be understanding of people's yeah. histories, whatever kind of, yeah. you know, we, bad we, things that happen. Yeah. Be sympathetic to that, but mm -hmm. don't be sympathetic to the extent of putting yourself in danger. Yeah in danger or putting your needs aside, yeah. you know, or sacrificing mm -hmm. just like the most basic things like yeah. safety, yeah. you know safety, what I mean? Boundaries, your safety, health. boundaries, health. Yeah. Just the because someone went the... through a traumatic experience. Yeah. Yes. Just because someone went through a traumatic experience or something that was hard yeah. that led it him to be mean... insane or led yeah. him to be upset or be a mean, yeah. it does not absolve him. What he does today, his past does not absolve yeah. him yeah. of the bad things that he's doing yeah. today. There's still and never. consequences and they still need yeah. to be righted those wrongs. I think they all, because they're all in this kind of oppressive situation, they all, it drives people to extremes. Michael Caine, you can even understand to a degree why he's so obsessed with law and order, because it's a bit of a madhouse, Scott. It's a bit of a crazy environment, a hard environment to live in. So for some people, they'd be like, we just need more rules, regulations, strict things, and, and to keep things uh, workable. You can yeah. understand that to a degree, right? But then you can go to the extreme. The Marquis, you understand why he needs to let out all these all these things inside him, because uh, otherwise you'll, you'll just, like, what's the point of living? Have you no true sense of my condition? Of its gravity? My writing is involuntary, like the beating of my heart. My constant erection! And then with uh, Abbe, I think, man of God, man of the cloth, but being in such an environment where there's so much pain and vice and sin going on, man, you know what I mean? And like, it's just, it's a lot to, to deal with every day. And he tries to be compassionate to everyone. That's also very draining. Yeah. And I think that's, so his extreme is to be just so pious and so righteous. But I think hard environments drive people to extremes. From now on, you will not even write your own ignominious name. Are your convictions so fragile, they cannot stand in opposition to mine? Is your God so flimsy, so weak? For shame! Are your convictions so weak? Are they so weak that they wouldn't stand against, yeah. stand up against mine? Yeah, because you know, I'm before. doing things differently. Yeah, yeah, and so he doesn't want to actually have that conversation. And that's, that's something everyone struggles with. A lot of people, if they don't have firm convictions in terms of values or how they're living, then that's what affects them when other people are just doing even the smallest things differently, because then they feel like, why aren't I doing that? And it, and it gives them questions that they didn't want to have to deal with, think about why they're doing things. I mean, there's so many things that happen that really change it. Every time something happens, he just kind of keeps adjusting to the point where he ends up going crazy, mm -hmm. right? Like he, he gets harsher and harsher to the marquee, which is something that you we never thought would happen because, yeah. you know, love yeah. everybody, even the patients mm -hmm. deserve love, treat yeah. them kindly. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, you know, why are you sedating him? Right. Then he's not going to feel um, yeah, like when right. you're cutting that's off right. his yeah. tongue. I have opium to numb the pain. Our intention here is punitive. If we numb the pain, what's the point? So yeah. these are the extremes, right? Yeah. He starts off that way, mm -hmm. the soft, kind, gentle person to yeah. that end. Um, so that's an example of, okay, mm -hmm. so his convictions maybe did not, you yeah. know, but at the same time, he I'm like- He was also tested. Yeah, exactly. He was also, he was tested a lot and that does happen, yeah. you know, in life. It's kind of unfair to say, to say to someone, okay, oh, you're your convictions yeah. are so weak. When life is happening mm -hmm. and, you know, yes, convictions are tested yeah. and yes, you, become a different person mm -hmm. because things are happening and it's easy to stay firm in, in your beliefs and your convictions and values when you just live in an isolated bubble exactly nothing changes or yeah everything is, is cocooned by, nothing bad ever happens yeah or, where nothing bad ever happens there's there aren't any huge shifts yeah when you have that luxury of stability mm -hmm. you know what i mean some yeah. people have that luxury of stability mm -hmm. enough that they continue to be the same kind mm -hmm. of person you knew yeah. and they never change that is a luxury that a lot of people can't afford because mm -hmm. they have a lot of hardships to face you mm -hmm. know i actually really don't mind convictions mm -hmm. convictions changing in fact i feel like that is the whole point of life mm -hmm. for you to have an openness yeah. to your worldview adjusting every single time yeah. every time you meet someone yeah. not to say that 
we want you to, you know, end up killing people. Mm-hmm. But like, if you're removing yourself from the yeah. asylum, yeah. but like as you're existing in the world, yeah. that's the whole point, isn't it? The Marquis, the thing I think that was, that made his books so well received mm-hmm. was that, you know, just the fact of other people seeing someone else write about things yeah. Yeah. Um, that they couldn't do themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the curiosity, you know, mm-hmm. the curiosity of just having your mind open and yeah. learning about stuff that you didn't know, yeah. having it, looking at life differently, yeah. like Michael Caine's wife, mm-hmm. right? She's yeah. 16 and she says, like, I was in a, in a, yeah, convent. in a convent. Nuns, and so yeah. I, with nuns, all I had were books yeah. to teach me about life. So yeah. that's what changed her worldview. It molded her being strong and knowing what she wants. Yeah. And so I don't necessarily think that having your convictions mm-hmm. change is, so is, is necessarily a bad thing. Your words, Joe, were shown. Oh, for fuck's sake, are they? Suppose one of your precious inmates attempted to walk on water and drowned. Would you condemn the Bible? I think not. Well, would you blame the Bible for someone drowning because they tried to walk on water? It's like, would you blame literature completely, 100%, yeah. for something that happens because someone wanted to mimic it or someone was inspired by it or wanted to recreate Can you blame the yeah. artist? Can you blame the artist for the ramifications or the natural consequences of them doing something? And that's also, because at first I was like, you know, it made me think, yeah, because that was a negative thing that happened because of Marquis' writing. Yeah. So maybe there is some restraint needed or some kind of forethought about like, what's going to happen if I put this out there? But then again, you got the wife who positively benefited from wanting to try out these things that she was reading or try and learn more about it. So then she meets this guy who's much healthier for her yeah. than the Michael Caine character. So the stuff she was getting from this was positive. Now yeah. the stuff that the one guy was getting was negative, but that's the whole thing also with like the Marquis playing the telephone game with all the patients is you're going to get the filter. Everything yeah. that is created or that is done, it's, it's going to be filtered through everyone differently. Everything that you say is filtered through different ideas, different worldviews, mm-hmm. different ideologies mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So you could present your argument or your point. You can present your art yeah. in whatever form it is. Yeah. And you're going to have different people digesting it differently. Some people are going to agree with you. Some people are going to disagree with you. Some people are going to be harmed by it. Mm -hmm. However, is it really the artist's fault or the presenter of the views? Is it their fault? If I say something and you digest it a certain way and then you act out whatever it is that I said, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Is it my fault or is it your fault? You could even, you know, plan things out perfectly in any piece of writing so that you're like, it's completely 100% clear, there's no way of misinterpreting this, there's no way of taking this yeah. and creating a harmful ideology out of it. People will find a way to do that out of anything. If exactly. That's, if they're in a hard environment, it pushes them to an extreme, they will find whatever they need. Any action you take, no matter who it was influenced by, any action you take is your responsibility, mm-hmm. 100%. If I literally w- was encouraging you to mm-hmm. engage in carnal knowledge yeah. at a Walmart, yes, good place um, <laughs> for example, and then you go, you decide to go and do that, you're responsible for that. Yeah. You should be held accountable mm-hmm. because when you're an adult, you get to that point of taking everything with a grain of salt. Even people mm-hmm. that you believe in, mm-hmm. you still take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. You have to apply your your own intelligence, your own situation, so, con- the context, your, you own have to, your own abilities, you know what I mean? Accountability, a dash of skepticism. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. Learning or being taught, someone sharing information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in digesting things dogmatically. The debate probably around platforms, people having platforms or yeah. being deplatformed or not have, not shouldn't have, a, these people don't have a voice, this yeah. person has too big a voice. The thing is, everyone's influencing everyone all the time. Yeah. Which I think is good, well, whether it's good or bad, it happens. So yeah. It's kind of exactly. amoral in that sense. Yeah. It just kind of happens. So yeah. you'd say some people have a platform and I wish they didn't have such a big platform, but you're like, but then who's to say that you should have a bigger platform than that Exactly. Person? Who's to say that? And also, even if that person didn't have a platform, this person that you don't want to have a platform, the people who agree with the person and then maybe back the person mm-hmm. and do what the person asked them to do, even if that person didn't exist because of how they are, because they're of their own personal convictions, they would have done it anyway. Right. Someone else... Mm -hmm. would have steered them in that direction that you are thinking currently that that person who has a platform and shouldn't have that platform is steering them. What's my point? Platforms and and people. It's all about who is the audience. If the audience is receptive to what you're saying, even if the information you're presenting is Mm -hmm. new, if that per, if that, if the audience has a specific worldview or specific leanings, it will make them more receptive to, or more amenable to whatever it is your, the information you're sharing. Put Gabor Mate in a different audience and it's never gonna work. So it's always predominantly 
about the person yep. receiving the information yep. and not the artist, not yep. the presenter. Which is probably why you should never even necessarily worry about someone having a big platform, I feel like, because yeah. there's only a certain percentage of people that will ever receive it anyway. They'll be receptive to it. If there's someone that is writing books, is going to speaking events, is, you know, whatever, like made films, that kind of thing, documentaries, even if you feel like this person is talking total nonsense, the fact that they're doing that stuff means they are being received or like they're receptive for some people. Yeah. You know, and so it's also worth looking at like reasons why. why? But going you know, back you can, to you can disagree with Jordan Peterson, but it's it's I'd say hard to deny that people a lot of people are receiving things he's talking about. So why is that? There's probably reasons. You know, same yeah. thing with Noam Chomsky. Why are so many people receiving? You know, and, and so strongly connecting to what he's talking about, there are probably reasons. And creating that. movements around yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, there are struggles that people are going through that these people are are, are targeting or directing. Yeah, you know, and are, it's are confronting. Why are people reading this guy's book? Mm -hmm. Because you are living in a world that is repressing yeah. nature. Yeah. People like carnal knowledge. Mm -hmm. The church is practicing in a very toxic way. Yes. These are the times where. Even when you're married, mm -hmm. you can only do the missionary yeah, position yeah. and you cannot do anything else yeah. kinky. Let's not straight because that's not God. That's yeah, not God yeah. like, yeah. even though you're married now. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why are people doing that? Because people are repressed mm -hmm. and they just feel like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I need something. I need an outlet. I mm -hmm. need to like break free. I want mm -hmm. to break, break free. free. Why the Marquis has so yeah. much support yeah. is because he was holding up a mirror to so many people. Yeah. A lot of people could relate to what he was writing about. Yeah. They could vicariously live through the characters because yeah. they were too ashamed and the world that they were living in made them to feel too ashamed to actually act out their desires. Yeah. What else was there in awesome. my notes, huh? Quite a bit. Let's see. In order to know virtue, we must acquaint ourselves with vice. Only then can we know the full measure of man. How can you really be a virtuous person or a complete person in general mm -hmm. if you haven't ever allowed yourself to be bad? Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's saying. Like yeah. to be a really a complete and good person, mm -hmm. you would have had to uh, made a lot of mistakes, yeah. hurt people, yeah. hurt yourself. Yeah. That's just part of becoming a good yeah. person. You don't just become a good person. Yeah. How do you even know what's good never been if you've never been tested, if your goodness has never been tested or if yeah. you've never been bad? Yeah. Do you well, know? and also being bad, I don't necessarily see it as like, you know, you have to murder someone to know. I don't yeah. like that. And I'm going to not do that ever again. Being bad could just be, you know, you have a, you're raised with a certain set of virtues and morals to follow, but that could just be putting you in unhealthy patterns. So maybe being bad in this case is like, actually, I'm going to say no for once. I've always yeah. felt the, the need, need to, to say, say yes, yes, and that's how I help the world, improve the world, and I'm good to people. I always yeah. say yes and, and uh, lend a helping hand, but I'm actually going to say no. And this, for me, is actually kind of it doing something bad. selfish, or it feels like am I a bad yeah. person? I'm challenging this. Because you grew this. up in an environment yeah. that made but you then say you that's find out. forced you, that's had you say yes all the yeah. time. And then you find out, oh, that wasn't actually necessarily harmful to me or to other people. So then that also allows you to push out of your own matrix of morals and ethics that, you know, you have. Yeah, like, I absolutely love that because a lot of the time people ascribe negativity to things that aren't even that negative. Mm -hmm. It's all because of your own conditioning. We yeah. all of us have individual conditioning mm -hmm. and our condition has been conditioned. Yes. <laughs> because of that, then, you know, every single thing we're doing, all uh, our actions, how we interact with people, how interact with ourselves in life there are all of these little you know sensitivities eggshells that we walk on mm -hmm. and then only to realize that you think that this would be a, you catastrophe you're catastrophizing mm -hmm. something that is not even a big deal but mm -hmm. it also could be the best thing ever yeah. for you with Abe like he catastrophizes everything love he catastrophizes mm -hmm. his love mm -hmm. for Madeline mm -hmm. we should not <laughs> oh. This thing that means so much to him, the love, and this person that means so much to him. Yeah. He catastrophizes that, oh my gosh, if we do this, this is against God, we're gonna yeah. go to hell. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And of course, she's upset by that because she yeah. realizes she's like, hey, God's watching. If you'd grant me a final favor, I'd like a chance to explain myself. <laughs> Don't come any closer, Abbe. God's watching. Abby.
she's like, really, you're sticking to these kind of rigid ideas of how you should be or who you are when clearly it's against how you feel. Yeah. Does that make and any what sense? You want. And what you want. Does that make any sense? Why yeah. are you doing this to yourself? Yeah. And it's harming everyone. The ending for hurt me. Yeah, daggers through the heart. The injustice. I know. You have all the people that are wanting to put good into the world. They all either end up dead or crazy. Or committed. I've stared into the face of evil. And I've lived to tell the tale. He's just kind of like, I've been through yeah, life. Yeah. You know, I'm basically now living. Yeah, yeah. And so that's insanity. Yeah. The fact that I'm, I it's, want to live honestly now, yeah. which was what the Marquis wanted. Yeah. He was doing the whole time. So when you decide, I'm going to live honestly mm -hmm. in, and get out of this yeah, repression. Wanting to live normally in an abnormal world or yeah. will make you seem abnormal or... Wanting to be sane in an insane world will make you seem like the one that needs to be committed. Yeah, or br just breaking the mold. People yeah. don't like that. Yeah. Don't be different. Marquis wasn't an, a crazy guy. No. And I felt like even with Abe when he ends up in prison, I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't think that he was crazy. I think he just, just gone through some rough stuff. Full of grief and shame grief and, and shame. regret. Yeah. Everything was just kind of finally coming to a head. Yeah. You know, all these years of avoiding mm -hmm. himself, what he wanted, and yeah. the people that he loved, all these years of not living, when you've gone through some hard things mm -hmm. like he does, yeah. um, you get to a point where it just doesn't matter anymore. Beloved reader, I leave you now with a tale penned by the Abbe de Cumier, a man who found freedom in the unlikeliest of places, at the bottom of an inkwell, on the tip of a quill, if I color outside of the lines, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It just doesn't matter anymore. That is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I just realized how little abiding by the dogma gives. Yeah. It doesn't give me anything. Yeah. It doesn't make me happy. And so forget it. Yeah. I don't believe it. The Marquis de Sade, you're, you're actually publishing his novels. Yes. Ever since his unfortunate death, there's been a surge of interest in his works. Of course. I will use the profits to restore Charenton to its former glory. The worst guy in yeah. the movie, he profits. Mm -hmm. He profits for the the ver from the very guy he was trying to that he loathed. That he loathed. After he died, there yeah. was the popularity was mm -hmm. just so intense. Mm -hmm. And so of course I had to make money off of yeah. it. And all of a sudden, it doesn't matter anymore. The immorality mm -hmm. yeah. of how this guy lived, of yeah. his art, it doesn't matter anymore. It makes money now. Yeah. So, you know, we can work with that. Yeah. And we from can, immorality, yeah. we can harness it into yes. good. Fund the the asylum so it benefits us all yeah himself yeah. yeah that's usually how it goes there are lots of ways of exploiting or profiting off or appropriating someone else or something else yeah, yeah. for gains mm -hmm. so but you're appropriating even though someone else their way of living even though you were you're like i would never let them into my house mm -hmm. Because they're dirty. Yes, but I'll take their money. I'll take everything about them. Yeah, I'll take everything about them except them. I don't want to have to see them. Yeah. Yeah, so that really hurt me because it just felt like the bad guy wins. Which so. happens. My heart still hurts. Yeah. I don't even want to speak in my queen's voice to lead to where I'm speaking in the queen's English. Aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we speaking in the queen's That's English? That's my goofy, goofy voice. No, mm. the queen's English is... Is accent or... The accent. Uh, verbiage. The accent. Oh. Uh, the twang. Oh. Uh, I thought it was like speaking the Queen's English was like using a certain dialect. Yeah. Was, was the Queen's English is this. Is that, <laughs> is that how the Queen says? <laughs> rip. She's rip, I was going to say, yes. Yeah. So speaking in the King's English. No. Thanks to John Cox for putting Quills on our radar. Yeah, we, we love it when you guys recommend or bring up other movies that mean something to you. Uh, and we'll always check them out because we love movies. You know, we're not always necessarily going to cover them, but it, it feels great to, to have you guys engage with us in that way. So We watched Quills and yeah. it was just... Yes. Juice. Just kind of spewed out. It was just juice. Yeah. Put okay. stuff on our radar. We like our radars having tons of blips showing up. Yeah. That was some stuff we had to say about Quills. But yeah, what do you guys think? We didn't... Please let us know in the comments uh, if you guys have seen it, what you guys think of the movie. Is anything we talked about here uh, make resonate any with sense you? Make any or sense resonate? resonate or, yeah. or, you know, maybe there's some stuff we missed. But either way, let us know. Share your thoughts Share. and our thoughts. Yes, please do. Or and just any thoughts. Anything. Until next time. That's Bye. right. Bye. <laughs>